Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of The Aftermath. My name is Ian and as always, I'm joined by Dylan. Can we get some mayo? Mayo? Yeah. Like like the Lord of the Underworld? Mayo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man. Which is the, the Japanese. The entire room just is vaporized <laughs> immediately. <laughs> is that the, that is the Japanese translation of Hades? Is that what yes. it is? I was word right. I was going to. <laughs> I was gonna. Um, I was gonna say something else right, right at the top, but you uh, really you stole my thunder a little oh, bit. No, yeah, no, yeah. No, 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 no. I didn't no. steal your thunder. I made the thunder. Uh, well, I guess you're right, but but I had my own thunder I wanted to throw, and you threw your own. Nah, so. sh- nah son. We got tandem oh, thunder. Right, right. Tandem thunder. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's our uh, new band name. <laughs> tandem thunder. <laughs> tandem thunder. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no lightning up in yeah, this bitch. Nah, dude. All um, pan, no flash. I was <laughs> <laughs> all pan, no flash. <laughs> oh man! Yeah. Um, what I was gonna say was is that um, our resident uh, um, uh, expert, our resident me- uh, oh. uh, mechanist, um, see that has, the machinist, machinist, yeah, <laughs> machinophile, yeah. Machine of fire. <laughs> there you go. I was gonna say I have something. a passion for machinery. Exactly. I it's was what I love. Use that to kind of uh, tiptoe into what this episode mm-hmm. solely is. Oh geez. See, I do love machinery. I don't know that I would go quite to the lengths <laughs> that uh, that uh, this source material covers. But uh, no, no, no. But but. The, but the, uh, I, <laughs> how do you, how do you put this? Among the, the fact, ma- the f- no, 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 it's yeah. okay, it's okay. Among the many, almost obscure, niche yes. for the genre mm-hmm. mechs that I've come across, Zeo Reimer is easily mm-hmm. one of my favorites. Right, but, not- the, but that's what I mean. Is like you may not know everything about all of them, but mm-hmm. the fact that you know about this kind of like for me, <laughs> right. pretty obscure. Is I've like, gone through a couple deep dives. E- yeah, right, right. Just seeing what I can. You see. have a, 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 the proverbial um, bin mm-hmm. of of mech anime. You 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 <laughs> bargain per- or otherwise. Yeah, exactly. You have perused through the bin, whether it be good or bad, mm-hmm. and uh, and you've held on to a few gems, and some of them are. A lot better than others. Oh yes, I feel like um, it does. It doesn't take much digging to find those diamonds in the rough. But oh, holy yeah. shit, there's there's a good bit of rough. Right, <laughs> and it's, sometimes it's not even bad. Sometimes they're just weird. Yeah, they're just strange. I and just kinda can't dig it. Interesting. I and, can appreciate you know, it. I just can't get into it. Right. Um. But that's. And I think we've we have mentioned this. I, I think in. Uh, there's a few things that we talked about in previous episodes. So if you've listened to like the past like two or three episodes, mm. we are talking about Hades Project Z Project Z Zeo Rhymer. Mm-hmm. I always feel like I pronounced that incorrectly. Right. Um but the uh, urge to zero. The aid urge to zero rhymer. <laughs> <laughs> or zero imer. <laughs> oh god. Um uh, th- there are some ex- obscure um, I lost my train of thought. What we were talking about a second ago, mm-hmm. as far as like obscure mecha goes, we had talked about this in the in the past few episodes of right. like of like the story of this one and mm-hmm. how it's like really mentioned it here and there. Right, right, right. And at the same time, we also talked about um, I forgot what else we we mentioned something else about this mm-hmm. and about like the fact that there are some obscure ones out there and some really nice ones and. Uh, um, this one is a little short, four episode OVA. Oh yeah, and super small. I won't get into the rest of this, but apparently there's an anim- there, there's a uh, manga that, that this is kind of based off of, and mm-hmm. this OVA deviates a lot from that. I just yeah. learned, I just read a little a little less raunch, <laughs> a little less raunch, if you yeah. will. Which I will say that was one thing I was surprised about mm-hmm. is that out of the probably <laughs> four it's episodes, it's not what I was expecting at all. No, 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 no. Like I saw the fucking video for this thing, I was like, man, this looks fantastic. Yeah. What? Where, where can I read this? I look it up and I'm like, oh, Ooh, uh, oh. oh. I said oh, no. I said I said mecha smut. May no, yeah, may no, <laughs> please. Uh, I remember what I was going to say. Mm-hmm. One thing we've talked about is the fact that in previous episodes, you know, just a few episodes ago, when we were talking about this show specifically, there was 
a few things that happened in Japan in like the 70s and 80s. Mm-hmm. Jazz was one of them. Oh, yes. A lot of fun jazz. The soul. Oh, man. There's so much great music that came out of Japan in that time period, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Um, and also... Animation. Uh, animation in many different forms. Oh, but, yes. But I feel like mech anime specifically. That, like mm-hmm. we've For anybody that's been... Um, that's looked into anime at all, or, or mech anime specifically, right. you, you probably would know. That, it's a cornucopia. There's a few cornerstones mm-hmm. that built this pyramid that we have today, yeah. and uh, and this is just one of those little bricks in the um in the in the in the, <laughs> the ever growing yeah. Jenga tower. Exactly. <laughs> right. Right. This uh, this Jenga tower of mm-hmm. mech anime, and um, you have shown me some of the fight sequences for this. Oh yeah. Uh, once upon a time, mm-hmm. and again, I felt I, I like with most things you sh- you show me or that you have shown me in the past, a fight sequence or mm-hmm. a crazy turn of events where you know it's some always sort of, check out how cool this is. Right, we should watch it. Yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> I'll uh, we'll start it up, and I'm like, oh wow, I uh, I don't remember any of this. Yeah, <laughs> or. When's the fight? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> when do we get the guns? <laughs> right. A lot of times he, he will show me these, like, uh, again, it's it's anime. So mm-hmm. as you can imagine, there is a, a... mixed bag. You never know what you're going to get. Right. But sometimes there is, there is like, a routine. There mm-hmm. is a... I usually proofread uh, these. Sorry, proof watch mm-hmm. before I <laughs> give them the green light as far as, like, what I would consider good material. Uh... Zero Rammer I have been on the fence about. Really? One, because I didn't know how long it was. I know yeah. I've only seen bits and pieces. And after finding out where it came from, I was like, is it even going to have? Like, wow, what the fuck is it? <laughs> What's yeah. going to happen? Right. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, I, I think it, it passes the bill pretty well. Yeah. There definitely is some uh, suggestive material in oh, there. Yeah, definitely. Um, they're just kind of sprinkled in there. Right. Kind of seems a little strange. Um, but also when, when you look at it from the perspective of like an eighties show. Right. It fits it, right in. Right. 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 Because like, there was think a, of any other like eighties yes. action flick. Yeah. And you're like, Oh, there's just titties there. And right. you're like, okay. Yeah. That's just a thing that's, I guess, normal relatively normal for that then, time period. Right. And this is the same way. There's, I think two out of the four episodes, there's just like a whole, right titty scene and it's just Bonkers. like I mean all right yeah I guess we're just no one acknowledges it they're nope. just n- naked and yeah. and that just is like <laughs> it's a, just treated yeah, it's like just, nothing <laughs> right not not to not to say that you should treat it like anything but it definitely is like a it's just not what you, we're used to you know to. what you, I've I've heard this before in storytelling and in writing mm-hmm. is that if if it doesn't change anything to take it out ask the question why should you put it in mm-hmm. And I feel like those conversations that were had when everyone was naked, (laughs) if they were, what if they were all clothed having those conversations? Oh, dude, you're going to have a fucking field day with Kill a Kill. Oh, my, really? Oh, shit, Oh, my God. Anyways, what I'm saying is is that those conversations wouldn't have changed. Mm. So at that point, it's like, so why would you put nudity in there? It's like, ah, because you want it in there. (laughs) That's right, exactly. I want titties in this this, this section of the, especially with, with these young twins or whatever. It's like, okay. Either you put them in or I'm out. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus. But anyways. needless. What was I going to say? Uh-oh. Oh, Oh, no. You say kill a kill? Yes. We have to get Ethan in for that show. Really? Yes. It's another, like, studio trigger show. Okay. Same studio behind Gurren Lagann. Oh, gosh, yeah. So you know. Good shit. Yes. Not at all what you'd expect on the surface. Is that the one where the clothes are yes. the... Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> I have Ethan to thank for uh, oh, informing man. me that you could translate the title as Dress to Kill. Yeah. Which is so fucking fitting. Yeah. Haha, uh-huh, get it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so cool <laughs> that my passion for that little show has been reignited and I really want to watch it again. How many uh, episodes are in that one? I want to say it's like 20-something, almost okay. 30 probably. Uh, Pretty good it's size. It's been a while. But man, it's good. 
It has some of my favorite characters. Yeah. Oh my god. I watched a little bit of it whenever you were rewatching it with Chase. Yeah. About a way maybe, back when a year ago or so. You'd seen bits and pieces. Yeah. But man, <laughs> as soon as you get the full picture, that's gonna be some good shit. Anyways, but but yes, I, I that is a it, I do want to watch that one. Mm. We'll put that one on the on the list as well. But yes, uh, for now, we'll talk about uh, armor as opposed to skin. <sighs> How you feel about the zero runner? Like the like the show as a whole, or oh, like no, the no, no. suit, the mech. the mech itself, beautiful. Mm-hmm. If I can get one thing out the way right off the bat, the mech designs in this show super are cool, gorgeous, super cool, Di- different in a good way. Mm-hmm. Like they feel um, unique enough, but they're not like right to stand on their own. But right. they've always got this one thing that uh, keeps them similar. Right. Like you could tell they were made as part of like a series of machines as opposed to yeah. just yeah, different designers for each one. Exactly. They've all got different body types, but it looks as though they're powered by the same like core structure. Mm-hmm. And man, I love them all. Yeah. Like it's it's just consistently appealing to the eye. Each one of them also has like a certain element or a certain mm-hmm. um like named super, after yeah, yeah specific named after. elements of the world. Right. And uh and sometimes their suit kind of like helps lean into that in a way, which mm-hmm. I think is really interesting and unique. Oh yeah. Synergized and, for those well, elements. Exactly. And then of course you have Zeo Rhymer, which is of the heavens. Right. So so he's obviously the big dog. Right. Um, what what could be above the <laughs> yeah, heavens themselves? Right. Exactly. And uh the, the, like like you said, the suit design is really beautiful. Mm-hmm. In this show, from a lore perspective, yeah. there is a group of people you that are specifically um it would would bred be the the correct term uh, yeah you, genetically you, modified you could say cloned cloned okay yeah yeah right. or we're specifically grown, grown yeah, made. right 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 uh not conventionally conceived is what i'm trying to get the right. point across they weren't just unnatural regular, exactly um biomorts they <laughs> <laughs> um, they the bio freaks, <laughs> bio freaks. <laughs> oh gosh, um, Ugh. they are. Um, how many are there again? Was it seven? I want to say one, two, three. All right, we got one, two, three. <laughs> I want to say it's seven or eight. But yeah, at least eight. Yeah. If you include the Zeo Rhymer, I mm. want to say there is the... Oh, yeah, he's definitely one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the devils. <laughs> yeah, one of the devils. Uh, basically, there's the there are these people that are these clones. Um, would you call him like a mad scientist? Like a bad... Like who's the, who, like I, the main, I would definitely describe him as a mad scientist. The Like the big bad. The, oh, yes. uh, but but we don't know who we don't know this person yet. But I'm I'm just trying to help. I'm I'm ha- I'm trying to paint a picture for you guys to understand what's mm-hmm. happening here. There is in this universe a big bad, right? A crime syndicate, a crime syndicate, and there is an evil, um, mad scientist character mm-hmm. who initially worked for them, right? Made those mix exactly, and. I think made the people who piloted those exactly, mechs. <laughs> and he used them. He used like his DNA to like clone himself into these different uh, boys and girls, mm-hmm. basically made little tweaks. Exactly, um, and biometrically made it to where only those people can pilot those special robots that he made. Mm-hmm. So it's like okay, so now it feels like a a privilege to be able to. Uh, pilot one of those things, but at the yeah. same time, it's also like a little bit of a. I love that little subcategory of like pilot systems. Yeah. For mechs. Yeah. Like, it's cool that you have an all-purpose machine that right. can universally be piloted by anyone as long as they know how. Right. But it's a whole nother matter where if one of these machines is made and it's super powerful. Yeah. And only one person can pilot. Oh it, yeah. You better believe that raises the uh the uh, value placed on it for me like right away right 
a la Unicorn. <laughs> I was going to say, I was really about to say Unicorn. Mm-hmm. That really makes it a lot. That, that makes Gundam um, specifically a, like a whole n- new thing. Mm-hmm. Um, because you can just stumble into a like a Gundam once upon a time, right? <laughs> and be able to and be able to wield this super weapon, mm-hmm. and now there's a way where it's like really locked off, which is which makes more sense in a right. way. But because Benazir wasn't synced to it right away, he oh had yeah, to, <laughs> he still he stumbled into it, it <laughs> stumbled upon it. His dad right, just right, like right. gave him the go ahead, <laughs> and then died. And uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> but with Masaki, or sorry, Masato, he was like. Like straight out the womb, yeah. Able to pilot this thing, <laughs> right? And so, and so there is this, um, there's this this girl, um, who was supposed to be like the leader of this organization, mm-hmm. and was supposed to be Yuri the one, Dai. yeah, was supposed to be the one to pilot the Zeo Rhymer, mm-hmm. and then right when all that was supposed to happen, is when. Masaki. Masaki, the evil, the mad scientist. Pulled a heel turn. Yeah. He takes the Zeo Rhymer and also takes, what do they, con- they call him? <laughs> the, the zygote. The zygote. Yeah. They, the it, which, little baby Masato. Right, right. Who is our protagonist. Mm-hmm. And I was leading up with all this just that way. Again, at this point in time, we don't know this at the beginning of the show. Right. So we're just following this little 15-year-old kid. Mm-hmm. And he's just a normal. Gets cornered in an alleyway by a bunch of men in black. and uh, right. Gets his shit kicked in, kidnapped, like, brought to a secret base, and told nothing. Right. And he's in prison right now is what it seems yeah. like. And they just lock him up for however long. And the way they rationalize this, by the way, is to uh, <laughs> heighten and or awaken those uh, natural oh, fighting gosh, instincts. Yeah. Exactly. It's like if we get him riled up and pissed enough, he's going to be able to really fit that mold no problem. Yeah, he's able to, he's able to um, tap into that those character qualities that's going to make him sync with the Zeo Rhymer really mm. well. Now, I'm going to say this right off the bat. Not a good way to uh, start, a, start a partnership with somebody. Nope. Because Can't. this has to be a partnership. Right. There has to be a two-pilot system for the Zeo Rhymer. Exactly. This kid is your only hope mm-hmm. to fight this organization. Right. Treating him like shit is... Uh, no, not not gonna work out too well for you. Not to mention mm. informing him, showing him that his parents are not his real parents, oh, God. and just people they paid to raise him. Bruh, we're not even like, and I, I've, and I've said this. I've this said, is in the I, first episode. I say this about a lot of things. I say this same phrase, and people have have, have called me out about it, but mm-hmm. it's the same. It, I'll stand by it. Mm-hmm. We're not even like 15 minutes in. Yeah. We're not this is a 20 minute episode. We're not even probably 10 minutes into this episode. Yeah. And all of a sudden his parents show up and he's like, "Mom, Dad, they got What's me going on? They got me locked up. Get me out of here." Mm-hmm. And in the process of that, his dad Like, "Sorry, kid, I'm not your dad." His dad hands over <laughs> Snatch mom. We're just dad, strangers. And gets gets a a briefcase full of money. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And he's like, at like, first, he's like, "You're selling me, <laughs> yeah," because oh. that's what it looks like. Uh-huh. And I'm like, "Bro, I can't what? imagine." I uh, he's 15. Yeah, I was like, "Dude, just a kid." At this point, I was like, "I don't know what this show's about, but it is about to be traumatic." Mm-hmm. Like we said before, no way to like. I don't think it's any way to start a partnership by like roughing him up and like not telling him anything or whatever, yeah. but I was like, uh, Shinji. <laughs> or it's like, <laughs> right. let's just like, oh, let's just not man. tell him anything and then just like get him all riled up and pissed off. Compared to Shinji, oh my God, dude. I'm not, Shinji I'm not, I'm had not, every benefit. Oh, I know, I know. I'm not comparing them, uh, you know, side by side, but I just, right. I do feel like there is a way where he's like, he is asking questions and everyone's like, huh. And like that's, <laughs> right. not, that's not an answer to his question. He's yeah. asking an honest question. He's trying to figure out what the like, hell's happening up. here. And there's like, shut up, Shinji. And it's like, <laughs> okay. and, and then when he gets pissed and leaves, everyone's like, well, why did he do that? I'm like, well, because you treated him like shit. Yeah. He has been in a coma for years. Anyway, mm. I'm not I'm not to get back on that <laughs> that Apple box again. Right. But this is the same sort of thing. You got a kid here who's like, I, I what is I, happening? I just got captured. I just found out that my parents 
what I thought they sold me into whatever this slavery is that I or apparently human am in. Trafficking. Human trafficked. But apparently they're telling me that they were never actually my parents. Yeah. So now who am I? What is happening here? <laughs> exactly. And at that, and of course, and everyone, and like no one's giving him anything. All the edges, a guy in a suit and shades, and he's like, <laughs> right, and it's like, okay. right. And then this young girl here, who's like standing there, who's like also kind of like, who seems like she's part the of the project, only seemingly friendly face, right. And he's like, still just kind of aloof and like and around. It's like, and it, and it feels like it, for me, it's just it's, like <laughs> her main focus is just letting him know, like, hey, you're supposed to pilot the zero armor with me. And it's like. What the fuck is that? It, it's like <laughs> why? <laughs> it, it's like he gets tossed around. Yeah, he gets like a he gets you know beat up. He gets shit on a little bit, and they're always mm. like yeah, yeah, whatever. And of course, yeah, there's this girl who's like <laughs> we're gonna the, be getting the fucking cockpit. Yeah, getting this stupid. cockpit, you stupid idiot. And then of course, the girl's like, hey, we're supposed to be friends. And no, it's like, I don't, no, I don't, <laughs> I don't. What is happening? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're gonna be safe. I don't think so. <laughs> the opposite, in fact. I'm starving. Yeah. <laughs> And it's like what? No, they've just been giving him bowls of rice. He just r- is refusing to eat. Yeah, I don't blame him. On the him. verge of breaking. No one's telling him anything. Exactly. You have him locked up in a prison cell, and everyone's like, "You're supposed to pilot this thing." And he's like, "Well, then, so how about get you, ready, kiddo. What is happening? Time to put that anger to good use." Right. As soon as one of the uh, How Dragon members shows up, I believe it's the uh, the Wind Mech. Right. I can't Super remember. Cool. I, I think the pilot's name is like Taiha. Yeah. But, uh, oh, man, they send him out to uh, destroy Zero Armor. Right. And uh, Masato. And for a while, it uh, he just doesn't seem to know what he's doing. Of course, he's never piloted this right. thing before in his life. But, um. What, with man. the help from his, like, female companion that is, like, talking into his ear. Right, she's, a, she's the crutch right now. Right. Just keeping him <laughs> standing. She's the sub-pilot, so mm-hmm. she's not in the same cockpit as him. She's, like, in a separate cockpit or whatever, mm-hmm. talking to him, like, kind of, like, like you know, hyping him up. Yeah. Making it easier for him to pilot the suit. Mm-hmm. Just giving him pointers here and there. Right. And, man, this first fight has got to be one of my favorites. Super cool. Because for a while... Zero Rhymer's on the back foot. Yeah. Because of the pilot. And then as soon as he's like on the ropes, like about to be destroyed, he's been put in the eye of a, of a whole hurricane. Oh, yeah. Because of the way this mech works, it's able to control like the winds and all that jazz. Yeah. And man, not only do I love the way Taiha's mech looks. Yeah. Like this majestic, regal, almost like eagle-like figure. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's just got great proportions. Mm-hmm. I love the... F- the main thing I love about these mechs is their clawed fingers. Yeah. Nothing will look better <laughs> to me. Like, I, I'm I'm always up for, like, the whole squared off, like... Yeah, yeah. Big old sausages we're used to. But there's just something about the claw. Yeah. That just does it for me. Really? Yes. You're a claw man. I am. Okay. I, I I'm always I'm I'm good with pun I'm good for punching. Right, right, right. But if there's any way I can like pierce and or scratch, uh, I see. Okay. rip and tear, <laughs> perhaps Got it, if it even. Yes, I'm for it. And as this dude is like charging Zeo Rhymer, yeah, we get a little flash of the cockpit, and Masato goes from fearing for his life to immediate smug prick. Oh, yeah. And he activates the Mayo mm-hmm, attack. Yeah. Like, he puts both arms up, closes his fist, mm-hmm. and then just puts both of, like, these orbs on yeah. his, uh, on the backs of his hands together. Yeah. And it's like a fucking nuke. Just Crazy. immediate, like, death orb. If you come within five meters of me, sorry, a hundred meters of me, you right, will right. be vaporized, <laughs> and that's exactly what happens. Yeah, it is. Um, one thing interesting about this show is that the protagonist in in that moment we get to see there's like this underlying yeah these, dark this side. this abilities that they were talking about that they're like forcing out of does not feel friendly. No. It feels 
wrong mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. But he is like defending the place that he's supposed to be defending. So it's like, okay, right. like you are you are he's killing them. these people for the right reasons. Right, right, right. But but they're just at this, least on the surface. Yeah. <laughs> But but this is the first time in a show, or at least like an anime or a mech anime specifically, that I have seen. Um, I've seen a character like this. Mm. I could be wrong, and and, and I'm and I may be speaking. Of, <laughs> I think the uh, closest example I can think of is uh, Camille. Whenever yeah. he first steals the Mark yeah. II, and is just fucking around with the <laughs> the Titans officer. Yeah, laughing. That's true. Yeah. Because because his character feels he is the protagonist. Right. And he, he it, whenever he is what I'm going to call quote unquote lucid, whenever he's like himself, mm-hmm. he feels like a normal kid. Right. And he's like thrust doing, into an unfair situation. Exactly. He's just trying to make Understandably the most of it. upset. Right. But then there's these moments where it's like, man, as soon I, as he's in the thick of it, there's some sort of switch that flips. At certain points. And then the moral gray area starts to creep up, and you're like, ooh, I can't get behind that, yeah. dude. You're talking about, like, just, you're, you're like, now you're now you're starting to tiptoe into, like, whenever innocent lives are at stake, you're like, nah, send them all to Right, hell. it it's goes like, from ooh, okay. morally gray to uh, in the red. Yeah, real, f- red Crimson. flag. Red flag. Yes. But, but with that, this is also the first time, um... The first portrayal like this, I won't say the first time, for me, um, where the main mech is the de facto end point. Mm -hmm. Like, there's nothing above him. The end all be all. The end all be all. The the turn A. The most, yes, the most powerful. Mm -hmm. Like, there are, like, I'm trying to think, like, even like Gurren Lagan, like, there were these, like, (laughs) <laughs> but the the power creep right. happens where uh-huh. they like well they'll go back and forth. Each specific iteration will be leagues more powerful than the last, right? But there will still be this kind of like will they won't they of like who's mm-hmm. going to be, but it's going to it keeps increasing, right? On um, the hunt for the biggest fish, <laughs> exactly. So that you may yes. be the biggest fish, <laughs> exactly. Um, whereas for this, the second the Zeo Rhymer is on the battlefield. Mm-hmm. The opponents, which we're supposed to kind of be against, and we hear their dialogue as to right. like you know we get their backstories, we get why they're here, why they're mm. fighting for the for their queen or whatever. Right. The second the <laughs> Zeo Rummers on the battlefield, all of a sudden their tone shifts a little. All like, bets are off, and they're all they all of a sudden go from cocky, a little big, you know, even a little proud or whatever. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, he's here, right? And it's like. A cold sweat. Yeah, and all of a sudden they're like beads oh. begin to roll <clears throat> down their faces. They got they, they they freshen up a little bit, and it's like mm-hmm. okay, like they know they're in the presence of something big, even though we have no idea. Right. Even though it's we like know your CO stepping on the bridge of a ship. Yes, even though we know that that thing's being piloted by a child that's just that's basically being tortured right. to be a honest. hapless team. Exactly, and then of course he does that whole mayo ability, mm-hmm. punches his fist together, and lights up an entire. You know, tri-state area, <laughs> where, <laughs> where like uh, slowly it, making new Chernobyl. Yeah, exactly, and at that point, once that happens, it's like, oh, that's why I was fucked from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was no hope you could have won. As soon as it looked at me, I was dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, you had the upper hand because the kid had no idea how how mm-hmm. to operate it. Right. The second he learned how, he triggered that. A deep-seated ability and figured it out, you're, right. you're done. And that's not to say that the Zeo Rimer isn't completely indestructible. Right. Like we well, see this right. thing take damage, but it's only ever when Masato is in control. Yeah. And he's not, he is not well acquainted with the controls whatsoever yes. unless that uh, alter ego comes out. Exactly. But the second the alter ego comes out and knows how to do it and it's knows how over. to operate it, no, nah, it's over. Mm-hmm. So it's, you're right. So it's not in, it's not invincible, not invulnerable, um, b- but it very well has the capability. A, a, exactly. To be. Is it is that the the battle? All I know the outcome of the battle from the beginning. Mm-hmm. But there are some moments. It's just a matter of getting there, <laughs> right? And, but but I do like that throughout the, a, a couple of the episodes, they do throw in a little curveball as to like you know what's going on in the world that mm-hmm. makes it to where. It isn't the big dog on campus anymore. Right. Um, 
but yeah, <laughs> I, it's, it's very interesting. And, and like I said, I, there there could be other iterations of that, but th- there's the, this for me is the first time I've seen a show like that where like the um, usually the the kind of standard runaround is like mm. the the bad guy is a little more powerful and right. the good guys having to like work to get better to like mm. be a competition which is like any video game any oh, story yeah. that's just the way it is but this is the first time we're like the first two episodes it's like not oh, much hope uh, <laughs> in that department for i don't know i don't know <laughs> yeah because the second episode we get the twins mm-hmm and they get to they start coming around and they try their best <gasps> at it. They do have one of my favorite attacks. Super the interesting. Twin Lords. A very interesting attack. So cool. They basically line up both of their cannons. Yeah. And uh one of them fires first like these blue beams and then the other fires a red orb and as soon as they collide it causes a a, a fairly oh, yeah. sizable explosion. Yes. Followed by another immediate <laughs> it's just mushroom cloud. Yeah. It's ridiculous. These things are insanely powerful. Right. And as soon as you see them, like, test that thing out, it's like, well, fuck. How's yeah. it going to beat that? That's pretty big. And then they show up, start fucking up the city, and then he just waltzes around the river, <laughs> sits still, looks at them, and is like... He just looks at them menacingly. Yeah. His presence alone is enough to send them into a panic. They start firing at it, and he... Instantly has like an AT field. Right. You just start shooting at him, and just, it's just, you know, whole, I mean, hard stop getting locked off right there. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, they try to prepare to do their fancy Twin Lords ability. <laughs> right. And in the, I mean, the biggest <laughs> of big dick moves. <laughs> right. Dude, they fire the this thing off. Split second before it's about to hit him. He just jumps. Gone. Disappears. It looks like he teleports at first. Yeah. Like we see the like with the rear up to like jump yeah. up and then he's just gone. <laughs> right. He completely avoids it. It really comes across as like a um like a flash ability. Like mm-hmm. it, it like it happens in just such a way yeah, as like, like a, a fucking a, wave dash. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> um uh Super cool. For this show being as short as it is, they really do cram in a lot of like really important stuff, a lot of good world building stuff, but it does go a little fast. Oh, yeah, because it's not dealing with like the entire story. Right. Which makes me think how much they had to cut out. I know. (laughs) That's the part that scares me. (laughs) Each episode is about 20 minutes, which means that all four of them is about an hour and 20 minutes. Right. And I think for that runtime, I think they do a pretty good job. But if I was looking at this from like the perspective of like a movie... I feel like it could it be. It feels rushed. It feel uh, right because it be, breakneck speed. Because they're also trying to like, they're, um, they're kind of doing like a monster of the week formula where it's like you ha- you know the other like six or seven other pilots of these things and you're gonna try and like mm. take down as many as you can to get to the boss lady. Right. So it's like okay, so in four episodes we're gonna try and knock through potentially like six enemies, mm. and it's like okay, whoa, whoa, something's got to give Ow. here. <laughs> so yeah, right, right. So I think that that also that adds to it because I think a, a lot of the a lot of the meat of the episodes are all like really cool fight sequences between mm. those characters, which makes sense. But I feel like, um, it lacks a little in the exposition and, and the yeah. kind of the more of the world building and, um, like they hit on all the major points. Of course, and there's nothing wrong just with get it. I'm just across, but I mean, right. I feel Oof. like I, I would have liked at least a few more minutes in the beginning to kind of get to know our protagonist a little mm-hmm. more. Yeah, we, we, jump, we jump in hard mm-hmm. with uh, him getting kidnapped and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Right. It would have been nice to see him, like, I, like, like to see a little flavor of, of, like, what his relationship with his parents were mm-hmm. like. Yeah. Just, like, kind of a, a little flash fun. of his normal life. Just a little bit. 
I'm not I, again. I'm not. I'm not saying it's, it's bad. I'm just was like if right. I had, if I had to critique it, and I wanted to add and they do a little more fun things mm. with it. If they were greenlit for more episodes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Do another little one where we can add a little more to that first episode, because I think at that point, once like the quote unquote like second act happens, mm. where like the the trading of son for money happens, <laughs> right? I think it would hit a lot harder. Where it's like, oh, bro, I. We're only on episode one. You were my father. Yeah, 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 exactly. My and, mother. Right, right. And at that point, it's like, holy shit, dude. Yeah. And then, of course, I think it would. Jokes on you, bro. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but I also like I I like too that like they're that the is it Tau Dragon? Is that what it is? How How Dragon? How Dragon? How Dragon? Yes. Which is like the syndicate we were talking about. Mm-hmm. They also don't quite know how the Zeal Runner works. Right. Because they never had it. They only know of its infamous creator. Exactly. And how powerful it's meant to be. So at, at a certain point, they end up kidnapping... What is his name? Masato. Masato. They end up capturing him. And, like, of course, you know, trying to, like... Interrogate him. Interrogate him and, you know... Get more uh, information. Be the whole good cop, bad cop thing when trying to get right. information and out. And he of doesn't him. know anything. And, and the thing is... This They're is, still pissed. What was that? That was episode two. Yeah. He really knows nothing. Mm-hmm. They're no trying to idea. get answers out of him. They're trying to figure out what's happening. He's like, bro, I'm not even... What are you talking about? I'm not lying to you. Who's Masaki? Yeah. She, she starts like, yeah, she starts blabbing off names and saying some stuff. And he's like, I don't know what on. you're it's talking right, about. It's right over my head, lady. I hate to tell you. She's like, she's like, you killed somebody. And he was like, what are you talking about? And she's like, that big robot, you like, you he vaporized. Just, he and he was like, there was, a, there was a person inside that? Yeah. And she was like, yeah, my lover, like mm-hmm. my, my dude. Yeah. And he was like, and then, of course, at that point, then no matter what, then, you know. It's like the first, He goes blank. Uh, He's like, holy shit, I just killed somebody. Exactly. It's like that first fight in the original, like, series for Ava. Yeah. Where Shinji is just blacked out yes. for the entire engagement yes. while Unit 1 just goes nuts. Justifiably. And, and then that's where the first episode ends. In the next episode, as he's like just laying down in bed, he remembers what happened. Yeah. What the, like all the shit he wasn't away for. And he's just like, holy shit. I just laying some, there. I did Wide eyed with terror. Yeah. And man, it's so fucking like. I would punch myself in the face if I found out that I missed out on that. <laughs> not I'd that be you, so upset. Not that you did it, but that you missed out on yeah, it. Yeah, it's like I wasn't even conscious. Damn it! I didn't know what I did until it was until it was over. But Dylan, in the in the process of defending this country, you killed somebody. How does it make you feel? You're like, I don't I give don't a care. damn. I wasn't <laughs> conscious. Damn it! I wanted to experience it. <laughs> it would have been so cool. <laughs> Um, <sighs> of course, I would have had my reservations about right. killing someone. Of course, I don't want to kill anybody. But right. if, it, if it comes down to it, it's me or him. I'm going with me, bro. Yeah. Like, geez louise. If the only thing between me and him is, are these giant robots, then please. If it really comes down to me having to, like, having to kill someone, I want to do it in style. In the biggest ass robot. Right. There, what, there is. Of course. If, if I'm going to have to kill you, I'm going to make a show of it. Do you understand me? Right, right, right. If it ever comes <laughs> to that, I want know that I won't pussyfoot around <laughs> the issue. I want our stories to be passed down I'll make it generations. a spectacle. I want you to know that even though I'm going to be destroying you in this fight, I want you to know that your family will talk about this forever. People are going to carve that shit on pottery. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hieroglyphics. At how elaborate this ass-kicking <laughs> is going to be. Exactly. <laughs> Would you really want any less? No, no, of course not. Some unceremonious back against the wall no. firing squad type shit. No, 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 no. Because no. I know for a fact I'm I'm gonna at least put up a fight. Exactly. Right. There's no other way to go. I gave it my all. Mm. What it, it's the old uh, the old Vikings thing is going out <laughs> right. going out a blaze of glory, man. <laughs> Valhalla. Yeah, Valhalla calls for. If me. I am to die, <laughs> I die standing. I die standing with a sword in my hand. Exactly. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh man, bravado aside, uh, yeah, 
Yeah, I don't know about you. I'm hype right now. I was like, exactly. let's go. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> let's, let's devil may cry it. Let's go to the top of a, a big ass tower hell yeah. conjured from hell and fight shirtless in the rain with swords. Dude, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly it. <laughs> Sign me up. Yes. <laughs> wow. That summarizes, I mm. feel like, that, that game very well. Yes. That's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm not even gonna lie. I lost my train. I, was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I feel like I was gonna talk about something. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> and I lost it. Um, right. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Uh, so he gets captured, mm-hmm. and uh, and in in not knowing anything, he also divulges that there it, his he has a partner, and of course she shows up and saves his ass. Right. And uh, and then of course you know. And at this point, he's desperate to learn anything about right. who he really is or who he's supposed to be. <laughs> they're they're torturing him, trying to get answers out of him. He's like, "Please tell me. I, I want." Like, are you, you sure I'm gonna have to kill you? I'm pretty sure. Like, like, I don't care. I think you know more than I do, and I want to know something, right. anything, please. <laughs> but yeah, oh man. So she she ends up saving him, the his partner, and uh, and now the queen I think has a new understanding of what's going on. And I believe that she thinks that that she is the the pilot, like the main person, or what is she like? She what is she her assumption? Up, is she as soon as Miku shows up to save him, right? Uh, she <laughs> says that she's pilot of the Zero Armor. So then she figures, oh, it must be like some sort of fucking duo system, right? So then her next target to capture is Miku herself, right? Just to try to suss out any details or differences in how these two function as pilots for Zero Rhymer. Right. <laughs> mm. Oh man. Oh wow. Let's uh let's talk about the twins. Yeah? Yeah. Tao and Ein. Two like the two are of course twins so they're yeah they look the same but their personalities are fucking night and day very different <laughs> so they got a lot of trauma right if, or, if I, well, I'm sorry to work no, no, out. They, I wouldn't say trauma they got a lot of baggage right they Tao got a, specifically yes they got a lot of they got a lot of they got to deal with they got to go to therapy mm-hmm. because of the way their mechs work as they're meant to work in tandem right Tao feels that she's uh, been shafted as far as like her position goes. She's mainly uh, feeling as though she's only the backup for her sister's mech. Right. Which makes sense to me. If this is like a, a team right. type dynamic we're supposed to have, I'm, I'm okay with being backup. Okay? Right. I'm not going to mince words about how it's not fair or I feel like I should take the lead for once. I'm, no, we're a team. Yeah. Neither one of us has any like position over the other, right? But um, Tao just can't see it that way, <laughs> right? <laughs> Her pride won't allow it. Um, so as they are s- trying to work through this shit, Miku ends up saving uh Masato, gets him out of there, right? And then they're deployed in the city. Yeah. This is what we were talking about before with that whole fight right. sequence where he basically teleports away. Mm-hmm. After he jumps out of the way of this attack, he <laughs> <laughs> he just materializes right next to Tao and bodies her. Yeah. Like, puts her on the fucking ground. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Ayn, uh like, goes to support her, but Tao is intent on just soloing yeah. <laughs> the mech of the heavens. Yeah. Which, as I'm sure you could guess, does not end well for it. Right. The level three is really trying her hardest to oh, like, yeah. solo the level ten. It's exactly. Not we get I got it, I got it. You're <laughs> dying. <laughs> Stop. We get a fucking test of strength. She rams into him. He just effortlessly pushes her off. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Nails her a couple of times with a beam, punches her one of her shoulder plates off. Yeah. And as she is on the ground, she airs her grievances to her sister <laughs> about yeah. her... Uh, her understanding of uh, where she lies on the pecking order. Right. And of course, Ayn's like, where the fuck are you getting this? How could you think this? <laughs> yeah. I care about very little other than you. And of course, to prove it, 
as Masato's about to finish her off, she yeah. jumps in front of the beam and takes the brunt of it. Right. After which Tao's like, why the fuck did you do that? And it's like, well, let me tell you, you stupid bitch. It's because you're my sister and I love you. And then, then she gets it, and Masaki is just in the cockpit like, <laughs> wow, this is really dumb. What a touching moment. Yeah. Bye-bye. See you later. <laughs> Vaporized. <laughs> right, get cooked. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and there get they go. disintegrated. In death, they reach an understanding. But, uh, yep. yeah. Yeah. Only only problem is it it took them dying to do it. <laughs> of course, and I know that we're I know we're joking about disintegrated and blasted and all these like funny terms, but like I want you to like th- oh, no, these, these are, sisters these are perfectly accurate descriptors. Th- I know, but I'm I want make no mistake. I want to paint a better picture with words. Mm-hmm. Imagine these two sisters looking into each other's eyes through the mechs that are holding each other, mm-hmm. standing there, confessing that you know what, maybe you are right, and you know I. I was wrong. I'm, I was wrong, and I and I support you, and I love you. Mm-hmm. And then, as that's happening, the background turns a bright white, and then the whole screen begins to fade to a bright <laughs> white as they yeah. get vaporized. Yeah, the power of the sun. And when I tell you, there's nothing left, but a crater. There is nothing left but a crater of what once was right there. Mm-hmm. Everything catastrophic. Vehicles, bridges, buildings, gone. Vegetation, all of it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, so like that's what Zio Rimer does, right? That is that is the equivalent of a nuke. He does a lot of things, but the main thing is that mm-hmm. when he puts his two fists together and touches his center orb and starts saying "Mayo," is right. you're, that's it. No, nah. you done. You better hit whatever, the bricks, pal. You better pray to whatever god you're serving because you're um, <laughs> right you're about to get before i send you to him <laughs> you're about to get uh um blasted and probably reconstituted atom by atom mm-hmm. into the afterlife yeah so yeah i would only hope that it's uh, a an instantaneous process probably yeah i wouldn't be surprised if there's like a ah! <laughs> right before he eventually cuts off, you know. Yeah, Masaki's definitely sadistic. Like oh, he'll, he'll play around yeah, with it before yeah. he does the deed. But uh, so I guess so. At this point, just better hope it's not for long. I guess this is where we should uh, we should um, uncover the fact that Masato mm-hmm. is the kid, is yes. the fifteen year old boy, our protagonist. Right. And whenever he like shifts over into this, you know, Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde kind mm-hmm. of thing. It's the, Masaki. It's Masaki, which is dun, 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 the evil mad scientist, the mad scientist behind the Hades project. I'm not going to lie to you. I almost said evil wizard behind it all, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> right. I almost He's said definitely it, but, a tech <laughs> wizard, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Holy the shit. mad scientist behind it all. And he somehow was able to copy over not only his personality, mm-hmm. but like his memories as well. Oh, yeah. Which is as impressive. Soon as, as soon as Masato came into contact with Zero Rimer's core, right. that is when his personality would be overwritten with Masaki's. Right. And it takes for a bit. Like, it, uh, it's, a, yeah, yeah. it's a process. Like, the more he pilots it, the more Masaki comes out. Right, and sticks around. Mm-hmm. Like, after the second episode, he's seemingly here to stay. Like right. He even says, Masato's gone, bro. It's just me. Yeah. There's a couple of like very um, aggressive moments. Yeah, dude's a scumbag, bro. Oh god, the worst person imaginable in a lot of ways. Yeah, sexual assault included. Egocentric. Yeah, cares about nobody but himself. But the painful part that I'm talking about is when all of a sudden you can tell that Masato's still there mm-hmm. underneath and is trying to get out. He's because he's like... Because Masaki will be like, visibly oh. <laughs> uncomfortable and or in pain. This, like, migraine will will flush over, and it's all of a sudden like, holy shit, he's fighting for his life to... Right, s- near debilitating. Yeah, that personality that's right there is fighting for his life to stay there. Because mm-hmm. whatever the other one is, is trying is finally able to... Is finally strong enough to try and fight for its place back as the the front personality. Oh, yeah. So it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Wild. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, man. 
What a crazy turn of events. Yeah. What happens in the third episode? So, number three. I know I know some of this kind of what we're talking about happens in three, where we get to, we get more elaboration on right. you know, who's who and the inner workings of right. the uh, crime syndicate. Yeah. How uh, some folks are a little more on board or not. Yeah. With the uh, the project than others, as well as a uh, a little love triangle in there as well. Yes, a very uh, short lived. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but still there. <laughs> Worth a note. Mm-hmm. Now, our third contestant is easily the coolest looking member of the syndicate, Ritsu, the masked man. Oh, the masked man, dude. Mm-hmm. Super cool. In charge of the uh, the moon mech. Yeah. Which you'd think the moon residing in the heavens would be at least somewhat comparable. Right. But no. No, he uh, but uh, he, he puts he yeah dude he delivers though. He delivers. The motherfucker's of, powerful. Of all the of all the Howl Dragon people, the character design is the coolest for him because mm-hmm. he kind of has like a Mandalorian T visor helmet kind oh, of yeah. vibe. He's got this armor on. He mm-hmm. like he just and he's also a little mysterious. Right, doesn't talk much. Right. So all the other people kind of have their discrepancies. They have their you know their icks or whatever that are kind of weird or interesting about them. Right. But he is like he's cool. Mm-hmm. He's means mysterious. Business. All means business. Like he still garners enough of a uh, reputation. To like still hold that uh, sense of confidence he's got. Yeah. However, like as soon as he starts fighting the Zeo Rammer, he's excited. Like this yeah. is a moment he's been looking forward to. Right. Because he motherfucker's got a chip on his shoulder. He's got a grudge. Yeah. And it is for com- com- comparably like the silliest thing. E- yes. Because each of these clones. These people that were made to pilot these mechs, yeah, have had some sort of flaw built into them from birth. Right. The the twins had those night and day personalities. Yeah. Taya had that overconfident, arrogant attitude. Right. And Ritsu just has a a, a woman's face. Yeah. Which he's very self conscious about. Yes. Enough to wear a mask. Mm hmm. And. <laughs> He goes, he lays it down. Yeah. Like, listen, bro, let me tell you why. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because at this point, Masato is at the helm. Yeah. At first, well, uh, it was well, Masaki. And also, it's like we said we said earlier, at this point in time, this is where, uh, Ma, what is her name? Ma, Miku. Miku. Miku she has gets captured. been captured and is now being like doctored on by the enemy mm-hmm. in some way. And so like, he is one half and also, to make matters worse, it's also him and not Masaki, the person that really knows how to operate this machine. Yeah. So he's like, he's a quarter of what like he really should be exactly. at that point in time. A fraction. Yeah, exactly. So uh, up against, so so even though he's in the Zeo Rhymer at probably a quarter of the power that he normally could be at, mm-hmm. the Moon Meg is obviously like laying into him. Oh, yeah. And it's like doing a pretty good job of like kicking his ass. And he's so like, So much so that Ritsu in the cockpit is like, That it's re- why is he holding back? What the fuck? Because I know he's holding is back. Is it really that weak? You got to be shitting me. Right. This is <laughs> the great yeah. Zeo Rhymer. Right. Exactly. Something's not right here. Exactly. And then, of course, as you were saying, then, you know, they, they start to conversate for a while mm-hmm. and they start to open up and kind of say, you know, who had, like, why you have a chip on your shoulder and why, you know, you're trying to. Right. All that stuff. Masato hits him with the, why do you hate him so much? What did he do? Yeah. And then he explains. And as he's telling his story, at the tail end of it, Masaki resurfaces and is like, wow, Ugh. you're just as much of a bitch as you were when I no, <laughs> when I was alive. Yeah, I forgot about that. Uh-huh. Gosh, like, that's You really awful. think I'm going to let you win? Ugh. And of course, after hearing his voice, he goes ballistic. Yeah. The mech that he pilots has these like little charge moonlets that he yeah. calls them, holds stored up energy that he is able to use to empower his own mech like right. above what it normally outputs. Now, normally this would be 
relatively like insurmountable, especially with the state the zero rhymer has been rendered. Right. But uh of course when you get Masaki behind the controls, it's unstoppable. Yeah. There's no hope for victory at that point. Right. Now Oh, ugh, the creepiest part of the whole sh- freaking mo- sh- whole show. Mm-hmm. Our girl Miku Miku receives the signal to be mm-hmm. recalled to uh, oh. Zero Rhymer. Masaki reveals that she is actually the dimensional coupler system. Yeah, she's like an android, right? Inserted into the core is able to. Unearth Zero Rhymer's right. like full potential, and as soon as he gets her back into the core, that's it. Yep, game like is, game is done. <laughs> Ritsu tries to fire off the Jay Kaiser full power, nah, and he's able to fire it. Yeah, yeah, takes out a whole mountain. But once the dust settles, we just see Zero Rhymer just chilling out in the sky, right? Right, like, yep, holding up one hand. <laughs> mm, yep. And then he clears the cloud cover around the around the mountain, destroys his last moonlit, and he is left a sitting duck. Yeah, basically, he fires off little flash beams. I like to call them <laughs> angel beams, if you will. <laughs> yeah, and moon beams. Right. All it takes is three good hits, and he's down for the count. Now, the weirdest part about it is that Risu still refers to Masaki as father because yeah. he knows about their origins and how they were created. Yeah. And I I still don't... I, like, I get thematically why we'd call him that, but, I mean, with how much hatred you hold for the dude, I wouldn't imagine yeah. it would feel right calling him that. But, uh... <laughs> After hearing that, Masaki's like, nah, son, I ain't your daddy. Nah. <laughs> Return to nothing. <laughs> Damn. And then he is uh, promptly mayoed mm-hmm. into oblivion. <laughs> mayoed. Yeah. Yikes. See, I was hoping to, as funny as it sounds, I was hoping to avoid like the whole condiment correlation yeah. with the word. Because it sounds so fucking cool in the show. Oh, yeah. Like, the voice field. I love that the Zell Rhymer says it. Yeah. Whenever it does the attack. But, um... <laughs> it just makes me think, like, he's throwing a, j- a jar of mayonnaise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoever he's fighting, it's ridiculous. Mustard. <laughs> Catch up. Yeah. Um... Thousand Island. <laughs> <laughs> right. Caesar. Caesar. <laughs> um, so, anyways... um. And then we get into our fourth episode, and this is the one where, like, where we the final bout, where the other three all kind of like coalesce and they try to like attack the base mm-hmm. that the Zero Rhymer's at, and it all ends up yeah they for not they start destroying the city trying to lure him out, and then whatever they realize he's not coming, it's like well shit yeah I guess we'll just head to his house <laughs> yeah right right <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so they get there and knock on the door yeah. Proverbially. Right. They cause basically an earthquake. <laughs> exactly. They basically like dig up the entire underground base and make right. it an above ground base. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Surprise. Right. At this point, Masaki is just chilling out in a lounge. He's got full possession of the oh, Zale yeah. Rhymer. Not gonna <laughs> really do what the organization tells him to anymore just because he's sick of doing their dirty work. But uh Miku poor poor good girl that Gosh. she is is just trying to convince him especially now we know that she's like a an android and it's like okay so now i now it's like i'm a, I'm a little more forgiving towards like her seemingly aloof yet bubbly personality oh, right 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 her like her um positivity but also like not quite knowing <laughs> the emotional trauma of right. certain things that have gone on so anyways but at that time it's like <laughs> Man, Masaki is... Look, you're talking to a brick wall, lady, mm. please. Just knock the fucker out and dig up that old 15-year-old boy. Yeah, please. Ugh. Masaki's a, like, just a trash bag. Yeah. He's awful. Piece of shit. Piece of shit is, yeah, the nicest way of putting it. Right. Um. So, Oki, being in the situation that he's in, yeah, <laughs> elects to uh, 
grab as many guards and guns as possible to go and uh, force Masaki yeah. to go out in the Zeo Rhymer. Right. Now, at first, uh, Oki just walks up to him like, listen, bro, I got a gun to your head. Yeah. I implore you. Please. Get in the robot and go uh, destroy the rest of that organization, please. And as he's got this gun to his head, Masaki is just like, you're going to kill me again? Huh? Yeah. And then we're like, again? Oh, no. <laughs> and then they elaborate on how Masaki was able to defect from How Dragon and uh. bring the Zygote, Miku, and the Zeo Rhymer to this secret base. Right. I believe. <laughs> I think the organization is called Last Guardian. Yeah. Which is a pretty metal ass name. Of course. Way cooler than any like secret organizations that I know of in real life. Right. But um yeah. After that little uh bit of exposition, the stakes are uh, just a bit raised. Right. Because at first, Oki has been on the fence about whether or not it's actually Masaki's like full being that has been implanted within Masato. But the fact that he remembers his own death yeah, and who killed him is enough yeah, that, enough that's, cause for concern. That's trippy. Yes. That's like a whole like reincarnation kind of vibe where mm-hmm. it's like, I don't even know how I would feel in that moment. Yeah. I'm like, I, how did you know? <laughs> right. I would have just shot him again yeah, on the yeah, spot, like, yeah, uh, right, yeah. Right. Back, <laughs> back, demon, back. Right. No. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> you stop that. I have to ask you to quit right now. Yeah. This ain't going to go the way you think it is, Chief. Yeah. But, um, yeah, after that, Masaki busts out the, uh, the AT field. Yep. And forces all the guards, Miku and Oki included, into the wall. Yes, it's like as a human, as yeah. like a regular person, you're like right. oh shit. Now we're talking about like magic now. All right. No, he's just got some sort of fucking device in his pocket, and um, thankfully, the uh, the good old trademarked Masato migraine strikes, <laughs> and he is rendered just unconscious at that point. Right, still functioning, just you know, can't quite focus on the uh, the task at hand. But with the uh, the advent of the uh, unearthing of the base, right? Masaki decides to uh, just go out and do the deed before it, things get any worse. Now, three on one, not usually a good situation to be in. Right. But of course, it's the Zeo Rhymer. So you know, there's <laughs> she's. He's it's got as, just about everything he needs already. It's as we've said before. On a good day, he'll wipe out, you know, an entire uh, neighborhood. Right. More than a few. So. But uh, the the mech that Saiga pilots, this dude with red hair, yeah, seems a bit of an oddball in the organization, has been built up as the only other mech in this collection that could stand up to the Zeo Rhymer. Yeah. By way of its weapon alone. And to me, that comes across as an uh, empty boast. Right. Because I, I don't think anything... Get, like, at this point, how can you believe... Of course. ...that anything else could stand up to this monster? <laughs> and it's... Oh, man. I forget what her name was. The Me one that too. piloted the... Uh, <clears throat> the Earth one? Yeah. I don't remember her name either. I don't think it was said very much. No. Not from what I recall. This is that love triangle that Dylan was talking about. There's right. the guy who does the... Is he in the air one? Is it air or lightning or... Uh, if I want to say it's lightning or thunder. Lightning or thunder. There's Probably a, lightning. And, and he's been like the pompous jerk for the whole... Right. He's been one smug of those... Smug ass. Yeah, smug asshole. This girl that reminds me of Masaki, honestly. Yeah. We got the um the girl that pilots the Earth one like we're talking about. It. And then what was the other guy's um like element or did he have one? Yeah, I uh I don't know. I, don't remember. I can't remember. I'm sure there's a list somewhere that, that has all their names and everything, but uh 
He's got a ton of missiles. Yeah. A ton of nukes, specifically. Just right in the legs. <laughs> a very vulnerable point. One that I may shoot at to uh, disable your machine. Little would I know that I'd be setting off a... Uh, of what are they like a 16 pack a 12 pack of nukes <laughs> yeah a couple kegs worth at the very least but um yeah he's just roaming around chilling out with him like it's no big deal and uh as soon as they uncover the base he's like full send it we're gonna destroy this thing once and for all end our troubles and woes right here and now <laughs> Okay, so it looks like Yurite mm-hmm. has right, the, she's the head boss lady. Has Dinodilus of the Earth. Yeah, that's that fucking big ass. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Yurite? I thought I, she was the Well, uh, the I, I I think she was, but what, uh, she she has that one uh piloted by Rockfell. That was her name. And, oh my god! How could I fucking forget? <laughs> and Burstone oh, of Rockfell, because she works with the Earth, Mick. And then uh, Burstone of the Mountains. Ooh. Uh, I, I pi- love these names. So piloted much, man. piloted by Giso. Mm-hmm. Attack the attack Tokyo while Amzak of the Thunder. Okay. Piloted by Saiga. Mm-hmm. wreaks havoc on the U.S. naval fleet in the Pacific Ocean. Yeah. It was saying that Yurite has them go all go out and oh, uh, do I their see, things. I was like, yeah, that's yeah, kind of, yeah. I was prefacing it. I was reading the summarization for Project you. 4 Extinction. <laughs> <laughs> the episode names were awesome. Mm-hmm. Project 1, Separation. Project 2, Misgivings. Project 3, Disillusionment. Project 4, Extinction. Damn. Super cool. But after they all get basically wiped out, mm-hmm. um, we get further information about like what, what we've already prefaced at the uh, beginning of this whole conversation. But the fact they start learning about the whole embryo thing, where like you know you know they are, they start learning more about right how they were made. Yeah, and it was a whole <laughs> made them right, right, the, and. It it really brings the whole story together of like mm-hmm. holy shit, there's a whole bunch of stuff happening here. Yeah, the major one of the major twists being that Yurite is no exception to this rule. Yeah, because she was made as well. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, upon learning this, she realizes that no matter what she does, she's not gonna win. Yep. Like regardless. It, like she's got this whole system in place as well. I think it's like the IEB network. Yeah. Which is this worldwide connected system of nuclear warheads that upon activation will turn the entire Earth into a barren wasteland. Right. As you would expect. Yeah. Now, this is just a last resort. Yeah. In case she's not able to subdue the Zeo Rammer with the other mechs, that's what she's planning to do. (laughs) Oh, man, she just can't quite bring herself to do it. Because she's just too nice. I mean, good. Like, you shouldn't like, have to wipe heart. out the whole world. Yeah. It's just because of that awful influence oh, I get of it. Masaki in her head. I get it. I get it. <laughs> that's that's another thing. At one point during this episode, you hear her floating fortress laugh maniacally. Ugh, it's so creepy. As if his spirit has just embedded itself right. into it. As the Zeo Rimer, like, basically, ex- you know, extinguishes it. Yeah. <laughs> so because she can't activate the system she just goes to the bridge of the ship to await Masa- uh, Masato's arrival right at this point he's a- been able to wrestle control of his body back from Masaki exactly and has completely trounced it or at least we're hopefully supposed to believe I, 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 I think it can come back Oh, gosh, that's which sucks. It's the worst. That's awful. I hate that shit. That's awful. That like he will ever, he will forever be plagued, plagued by, the by spirit. this spirit, asshole. Yeah, jerk ass ghost. Well, with that most um, resounding conclusion, with mm-hmm. the the 
the queen of this organization, the big bad guy, just gets blasted away. As you're saying, yeah. waiting in this, accepting room, her fate, accepting her fate. It's like a real. Um, it is a nice moment of understanding between the two. Yes, because at this point, Masato knows everything, and so does she. So she's just like, "Yep, is what you it gotta is. do. What you gotta do. I'm in no position to stop you. So I guess you win." Which in of itself, but at least is, that fucking bastard doesn't win. <laughs> yeah, it is a satisfying conclusion. Mm-hmm. It for what feels like could have been a little boring of an ending, or like a little bit not flashy or gaudy or anything like that. Right. It is a an, a very beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yes, and we get ending. the main theme going. Oh, what a cool this main theme! Main theme dude. Super good. I I don't know who composed it. It's beautiful. But it's easily master class. Super good. Mm-hmm. Well, is there anything else you want to touch on before we wrap this up? Hmm. It's a wild show. Yeah, definitely one of the more unorthodox um, entries as far as what Definitely I'm don't goes. look too much into it or else you'll no, probably... No, no, don't. Probably, yeah, so. <laughs> you'll, you'll probably regret it. But I loved that we did a little... Uh, we did this little run-through of it because mm-hmm. it was a it was a fun different take on a show on a on a, oh, yeah. a genre that I think I know pretty well at this point. Because we had we had finished it like a couple weeks ago. We just oh, yeah, yeah. are just now getting around to actually talking about it right. in depth. The Christmas season is ramping up and so I am oof getting right back in it. Yeah. But a lot of the hard work that I did beforehand is really paying off right now, which I'm super excited about. So that's I'm, good. Work's not gonna be super bad. Mm-hmm. I don't think because I planned. I planned yeah. this time. Thank goodness. So that's nice. Preparation beats all. Well, for anybody out there who's looking to give us suggestions or talk to us, we have a. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. You can just type in Ian Wolf and you should be able to find you know me on Instagram or Threads or anything. Mm-hmm. I just got to see on Spotify yeah. that um, y- you can leave a review or like you can like you can uh, leave a comment or like a f- like a feedback thing. Really. On the bottom of uh, of Spotify, huh? I, I, like I was listening to a po- a podcast that I normally listen to, and I saw that it was a feature that was there. And uh, has anybody like, commented on our episode? I don't think. I mean, no. Like, I think it's a new feature. So, I, oh, okay. I could be wrong, but uh, anyways, I, you know, needless to say, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Oh, look, here you go. Uh, basically, you can type like you can tap on an episode, and then at the bottom you can uh, tap a reply. Wow! What did you think about this episode? That's cool. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is, is that if there's anybody out there that uh, wants to let us know how we're doing on a certain episode, you can uh, just tap on it on Spotify and type in your comments directly. Yes. I don't I share mean, them, good or bad. Exactly. I will either point and laugh or give you a thumbs up. Right. Sometimes both. Yes. Is that for the really special ones? If you say something just heinous enough, you may get a chuckle out of me. <laughs> and a thumbs up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I see you. Right. Um, anyways, uh, I still don't know where those replies go to, but I guess I need to figure out where. Anyways, yeah. regardless, what I'm trying to say is, you want to reach out to us, there's ways you can do it. And I appreciate it. We both appreciate it. Mm-hmm. We are gearing up towards the end of the year. We've got some cool episodes coming oh, yeah. up, and I'm super excited. Mm-hmm. We're going to try and finish out... Um, Unicorn before yep. the end of the year is up. And Cap we, it off nice. And we got the last episode of the year. The Hyansis. The well, that's gonna be the first one of the of the next year. Oh, oh, really? Oh, well, I mean, I believe. Did we so. do it that way last time, or was it? I don't think so. I the, the way it's gonna the way I was thinking about doing it was is talking about the the year in review oh, okay. of the games and the stuff that oh, came right, out right, that right. kind of stuff okay. and then the first thing we'll do for the next year is the award ceremony I guess of, 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 of all the ones we talked about throughout the previous week mm. which one is the one that gets our, 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 our mentions and our, I gotcha um, and it gets put on the on the plaque for the the Hyants of Fame the Hyants of Fame um, but anyways uh until next time, thank you so much for listening. See ya. Bye.